Welcome, everyone. I'm going to get started. Um, there'll probably be other people that join, but that's just fine. Um, I'm going to try to uh, make sure that I follow a good timing here and be done within an hour just so that everybody can go on with their day. But um, we will try to make some of these slides available for those that are attending after the fact and get you any information you need. Um, so again, this is a demonstration of RedStream Cloud. So welcome everybody. I appreciate you taking the time out. I'm hoping that everybody can see my screen. Uh, just some housekeeping items here in the GoToWebinar dashboard. I uh, believe there's a way to ask questions. Uh, one of you have already done that, so that's great. Just feel free to type in some questions. Um, I will try to get to those towards the end, or if it makes sense, I'll, I'll answer those right when I'm doing the demo too. So, um, And if I don't have time, I will be sure to follow up with everybody at the end and answer those personally. So, All right, with that, let's get started. Um, let's uh, first introduce myself. Um, I am this gentleman right here on the left, Jeff Hebrink. I've been working for RedStream for five years. Um, this is just an example of our support staff here. So in addition to me on the sales side of the house, um, we've also got Josh Wise who can help with anything um, customer service related after the fact, as well as support people here. This is James, support manager, Kyle, uh, support representative in Denver. Um, that is one, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that is one thing that's included in our system. Um, we include support 24-7, 365. Um, in all the years we've been doing this, we reach out to everybody after their calls or emails asking if they've received good service. We have over a 99% customer satisfaction rating doing that. We are US-based. Our headquarters is in Denver. Um, some, some other things to note here. Um, we do have phone support as well as email support. After hours support is available, our people are on call. Um, in addition to, we have great self-help articles and videos right within the software. Um, if you choose to go with us, we do provide personal onboard training. We'll get you scheduled on a date. Um, someone will call you and do a screen share and kind of walk you through everything. Um, just to give you a little indication of kind of what we do, um, we provide this concept called user voice. So if you're using our software, we always take ideas, suggestions, feature requests, and that's really kind of helped us get where we are today. Um, we're constantly looking at those things, monitoring them, um, and then you know bumping things up in priority if it makes sense. Uh, also, we have usability webinars. So after you join, you're invited to a monthly webinar series, which will be... Um, it's hosted by Josh Wise, so he kind of does deep dives into some new features or tips, tricks, any other uh, important aspects he wants to cover. So um, you can feel free to join those as well. Um, here's just a little update on what we've done here. So we have we usually have feature releases, um, almost one a month, and that includes kind of the uh, new additional features. So these are just some examples of things that we've done recently. Um, and then we also do updates and maintenance improvements. So again, there's 16 per year on average, so a little bit more than, than one a month. And those things are you know, enhancing current features, uh, maybe making a little bit of improvements as far as the usability goes. If we notice anything performance-wise, we correct those. And then cosmetics and bug fixes as well. So uh, what makes RedStream Cloud different? Different, sorry. Um, you guys can read this yourselves. I don't need to go into every one of these, but really it's our customer service um, and, and listening to feedback that we get. So that's kind of why we are where we are today is just listening to everybody, being able to incorporate a lot of the features that people are wanting. Um, some of the other things to note, I mean, it's super easy to use. You'll see in the demo, um, commission-free. We do offer all-in-one solutions. So we do offer website design, marketing as well. Uh, it's not required, but we do offer those things so as we kind of could be a one-stop shop for those folks. 
Um, with that being said, I am going to just go into the demo um, and we will get rolling on that. So let me move over to that. Um, so I just wanna make sure everybody is um, seeing what I want you to see. All right, so it looks like everybody's seeing my, my demo. Um, one quick question I will answer. Looks like Judy posted a question. Yes, you can absolutely see self-help video uh, before people sign up. So we can give you access to that. That's not an issue. We can also activate a free trial for people if you want to kind of play around with it. Um, and then you get full full access to that help system in there as well. Um, all right, so onto the demo here. This is our software. So again, it's cloud-based. Go to cloud.resstream.com to sign in. These are the different sections of the program over here on the left. The initial screen is called the dashboard. You can click on any of these screens and it will just jump to whatever section that you want. But in the dashboard here, what we've designed this to do is just give you a snapshot overview of what's happening today. So over here on the left-hand side, you'll see all of the reservations that are touching today. So we've got um, grouped by arrivals. We've got two arrivals. We've got people that are currently checked in and staying over. Um, we've also got two people that are departing today. Now, if I had anybody that was a no-show or maybe I forgot to check someone in, they'd be listed as a no-show. If I've marked any units out of service for today, they'd be listed out of service. So what this allows you to do here is quickly click on one of these. We can go directly into their reservation or their contact or invoice. We get to see some information here regarding payments, um, charges, payments, balance. Uh, these things are called tags. I'll cover those here when we're making reservations just to show you a little bit more information about the person and reservation. But here we can do a check-in process. We can print uh, a letter or a registration card or any other type of uh, correspondence. We can add charges. So we do have POS integration. Um, we can add POS items, we can do packages, gift certificates, as well as make payments. So that's kind of this this area right here. Now there are some some things you bulk things you could do. So we could come in and print like a registration card for all of the arrivals. Um, so those are just shortcut. And you will notice throughout the dashboard here, um, there are there is a print button here if you'd like to print some of this stuff so sometimes people want to print it and just kind of keep it on their desk um, moving over to the top right this is called the shared notes section so i like every every demo i do i like to compare this thing to like a post-it note so this is for internal staff communication anything that you might consider jotting down on a slip of paper keeping at the desk or putting on a post-it note and putting it on your monitor, you can just come in here and type those things in there. Anybody that's logged in gets to see these things. Uh, below that is a task manager. Uh, some people are calling it a to-do list, but basically this is a way where I'll just add a new task. Um, say, for example, someone comes in and says, maybe the, the faucet's leaking in, in room number one. Um, you could just say, you know, check faucet room one. Put some notes in there if you want. We have due dates here, it needs to be done today. It's a high priority. You can assign it as user of the system if you want or just leave it unassigned. Uh, by default here on the dashboard, it shows you anything that's assigned to you, which you'll have, it'll have your name in bold. And then as well as any un unassigned tasks. So those are almost like first come, first serve. And then it orders it by due date. If there's multiple items due on the same date, it orders it by priority. So anybody that goes and, and checks that faucet, we can come in here, click it, mark it complete, goes away. So great great tool to use for, for keeping an eye on things. Uh, below that is a recent reservations widget. So that's fairly self-explanatory. These are the recently made reservations. Um, you can see here, we can have defaults to show from all sources. So whether it came in from my booking engine on my website, whether I entered it directly into the property management system myself, um, you can show recently canceled reservations as well as OTAs. For those of you that, that work with OTAs, um, 
you probably know what they are, but uh, terminology is online travel agents. That means Expedia, Booking.com, those types of sources. Uh, so we do have an option to integrate there. But you'll notice here, um, it shows when the reservation is, you hover over that time period, shows down to the second when that reservation was made, who it's for, the unit. We can click on this and go right into that reservation and do whatever we need to do with it. But it also shows the source of that reservation. So for example here, um, before the demo here, I did a, a booking on my demo site for, from my phone. So it shows a mobile booking engine versus other ones that are just booking engine. Uh, other ones that just don't have anything in their PMS, that means that I've entered them directly. Sorry about that. Um, and then uh, moving over to the left-hand side, this is called the key items widget. Now, not everybody uses this, uh, but it is used for people that sell add-on items or packages. So if you sell add-on items or packages that include certain items, you can label those things as key items. So what this does is it shows the coming week and then how many of each of those items you're gonna need coming up. So this just gives you a summary, overall summary, the quantity over here and what they are. If we wanted to break that down by day, we can click on the daily details and then we get to see for each day how many of those things. And then we can of course click on these things and see who it is for, what unit they're staying in, if it was part of a package. Um, so that's the key items widget. Below that is the recent gift certificates. So our system does include a gift certificate module, so you can and enter gift certificates right in the system, as well as people can purchase a gift certificate right from your website. So on your website, you could have a link saying purchase a gift certificate. Um, you can set up the minimum, minimum dollar amount there, incremental value. Uh, they could come in and they could put notes to the recipient. They could put their recipient name in there. Uh, and then they would get emailed a, a certificate, but then it also comes right into the system. So with that, um, there is a settings option here. So if there's any one of these items that you might not want to use, like maybe that key items, you can hide the hide widgets and then they just won't appear. You also can shuffle things around. So you can move you know, notes over to the left or gift certificates to the right. You can move things down, top, bottom, you get the idea. Um, so that's kind of the dashboard in a nutshell. And before I move on, I just do wanna show you uh, these buttons up here. Uh, I mentioned the online knowledge base. That's kind of where this is. You click the question mark button. So whatever section you're in, it gives you direct access to that help system or you can go in to search the entire knowledge base and then type in some keywords and it'll populate either videos or articles um, that correspond with that. Um, and then, you know, they do include pictures. So we should, you know, click here and we'll show you a picture of what we mean. Um, it does have a direct link to email our customer support. And then here's that user user voice where we, when you when you sign up, you get 20 votes assigned to your account these are things that you can see what other people are suggesting for the software. You can vote on those as well as create your own suggestions and then other people can vote on that. So again, that's kind of what we keep an eye on to determine what uh, features we're gonna build. Moving down here, uh, I'm gonna switch to the occupancy map. So this will probably be a little bit more familiar with what you're used to seeing. Uh, we've got our units down the side, dates across top, reservations and availability in the middle here. Um, you can notice when you hover over these units, it does show you the brief description, capacity, rate plan that it's in. Uh, the reservations are color coded by payment status. Uh, and by, by default, I like to at least say it because it's different than mine. It, it's red, yellow, green, red's no payment, yellow partial payment, green is full payment. Um, on my system, I have changed this. I'm getting conflicting reports on whether this is blue or purple, but I'm gonna call it blue because that's what I see. Uh, I am red, green, colorblind. So we do have optional um, items here for settings. So what I did is I came into the, the color settings and clicked on this little ink drop button and you can turn it to any shade of any color that you want. So on my system, uh, I changed that as well. 
Um, navigating this, very simple. There's actually three different ways. You can come to the bottom and scroll if you want. So we can scroll back and forth, or we can use these quick action buttons. This jumps right to today. This goes back two days a week, forward two days a week. Or probably the more common scenario is we can click on this calendar button and hop to any day, year, month that we want, and the calendar will refresh. Um, but I'll go back to today because that's when my, my demo property has the most reservations here. Um, so you can click on existing reservations here. And what you'll get there is a nice little summary over on the right hand side. So when we click on this, we get a summary. We don't have to leave the calendar. I can I can do everything right from the calendar here. So on the dashboard, I mentioned you can do check-ins, check-outs, record payments. You can do the same thing here. I've clicked on Jack. I can. He's currently checked in. He's leaving today. I can check him out. I can add charges. I can make payments. I can print or email any type of letter or correspondence there. Uh, if I want to just kind of zero that out, I can click that little arrow button. Uh, next thing I'll cover is the availability. The available days will show the default rate for that particular unit and time period. If it's red and it has a number in parentheses, that's a minimum night stay requirement. So that just gives you an idea here. Um, now I'll go through the process of making a reservation. Um, that's very simple, click and drag. So if they wanna come Monday for three nights and stay in the lady slipper room, I can start by clicking and holding it down and just dragging it over for three nights. As soon as I let the mouse button go, it populates my rates right here. Now, a lot of times people change rates or they have offer multiple rates. If you do offer multiple rates, we do we have a drop down option for that. So maybe you offer a, a military discount or a AAA or um, a weekly type rate. So you can quickly go between, you can click on those rates and it'll instantly change the rates down here. Um, next item is packages. If you do not set up any packages, this actually will not appear. Um, but if you do, then you can quickly access uh, your all of your packages here and it will add them to that reservation. These items right here are called guest types. Now I've put adults, children, and pet in there, but you can actually create whatever you want for guest types and however many you want here. So maybe you want to keep track of adults and maybe children under 10. Uh, maybe you can even have a category of pets and you could say cats and dogs or whatever it is. You can create um, things to keep track of or people uh, that are coming. Now, a lot of times people want to modify rates on the fly. It's very easy in RizStream. So all you have to do, one way to do it is click on discounts. So if you wanted to offer a percentage or a dollar amount per night, you can just type in a number and then simply hit percentage and it knocks 10% off there. If I revert that back and maybe type in $10 a night, it'll just knock off $10 per night. Um, if you have any sort of tax exemptions, you can click on this and then choose from a list of taxes. And I'm hoping people don't have as many taxes as I do in my demo database, but um, it's a quick way to, to exempt certain taxes or all of them. The, la the Finally, the last two items you can do to change rates is you can simply click on any one of these nights to change an individual night, or I can just click on the word rate and type in anything, and it changes all nights to whatever I put in there. So, all right, so going back, I know I covered a lot there, but click and drag, we got our rates, we said, all right, well, let's book this unit. So, as and then it asks who's coming to stay. So as you start typing, it's gonna kind of weed through your database of people. Um, so let's say it's it's Bill Brown, or let's say it's not in my system. You spelled it out, they're not in there. All you have to do is hit new, add them in there, name, address, phone, email. Uh, if they're in there, it's nice you get a little summary here of the city and where they are at. Um, these things I'll cover here, these are called tags, information about a person, but I can click on them and then I get to review kind of everything about them. So uh, these are the uh, contact information here. So address, phone, email. I have a quick way to edit any of that if I need. Some other notes and details I can keep track of, of a person. Uh, 
reservations. So all of the reservations on file for that person. So this gives you the 39 reservations with 118 nights. And then these things are called tags. So everybody gets to create their own set of tags. And it's just kind of some quick buttons that you can click just to keep track of certain things about a person. For example, if you want to know they have allergies or they eat gluten-free um, or they prefer a king bed when they come. Whatever it is, you can, you can create your own. Uh, but then we continue with this reservation. We can take a credit card. I'm actually going to book without confirmation though in my demo here, but otherwise you can confirm it, put a credit card number in. Um, but I'm going to book without confirmation. And now you'll notice this reservation is now saved. So this at this point, this reservation is technically complete. Your website's up to date. Your OTAs are up to date. But you can do more things on this final screen. So these things over on the right, if you continue to ask questions that you want to keep track of certain items about this reservation, you can create as many custom fields here as you want. So for example, if you want to know specific diet restrictions or maybe their estimated arrival time, you can do that. Uh, we also have a special request field down here, type in anything you want. And then a private notes area. Private notes are just notes that you want to put in there that you know will never be able to be printed. They won't show up on any reports. They're just notes that you're going to see when you go into the reservation. And then finally, we get a new set of tags. So the previous tags are people tags. They're about the person. They'll stay with them. These are reservation tags. So the other tags always stay with them. These tags are for this reservation. And once this reservation comes and goes, then these tags, you know, don't really matter anymore. So Bill maybe says he has, he wants some extra pillows and units. And for this reservation, he's going to be coming in late at night. Um, so you can tag those things. But anyway, so I've finalized this. I've taken the reservation. I can say, thanks, Bill. Uh, appreciate your reservation. I'm going to email you a confirmation letter. We can trigger this little letter icon here. Uh, and I think somebody submitted a, a question beforehand, which I'll kind of cover right now. But we can select any letter that you want. Now, you can make as many letters in here as you want, and they're fully customizable. So you can create templates for letters. So for this example, I'm going to show a, a confirmation letter. As you can see, this can be full HTML, so you can really get nice and fancy with it if you want put your uh, pictures in there, logo. Uh, this will auto fill in information from his reservation. Now, I did add, somebody asked, could you kind of add this on the fly? Yeah, so even though this is a template, I can actually click in here, um, you know, make a new note, say, hey, you know, it was great talking to you, Bill. Um, it was a funny story about your dog or whatever you want to put there. And then you simply uh, click on the word email and this fires off via email. Uh, or you could print it and, and mail it if, if, if you need to print those things. So that's the process of making a reservation. Um, I go back to the calendar now and, and Bill's there. And since I did not take a deposit there, um, he is red. So let me actually address that uh, payment too, just because that's that's a common question. So the other, I'll show you this feature here too. We keep recently opened items and people and invoices up on the top here, kind of like browser tabs. So I'm quickly able to jump right back into Bill's reservation in case I forgot anything. Um, but you get to set up your deposit policies when, when it's due, what it is. Um, I can record a payment here. Now for credit card processing, I'm not going to too much detail, but we work with a company called Shift4. Now Shift4 can be one of two things. They can be your actual processor and the payment gateway. So they could be your processor and they're in their one-stop shop. Or if you currently have a processor in place, uh, they work with 98% of all processors. Um, I think it might be 99%, but um, they work with pretty much most all processors. So they could be just, Shift4 could just be the payment gateway to worth, work with an existing processor. So in that scenario, you could come in and, and select my deposit. I, I don't have a way to demo this because I can't enable credit card processing here in my demo, but I could choose like that Visa ending in 1111 um, I hit make a payment and then it actually processes that payment, you know, returns approved, declined uh, right from the system. So 
that's kind of the um, item I wanted to cover because I, kn I know that was asked. Uh, I'm going to just monitor um, any other questions. No, nope, no questions come in. So, all right. A couple of other things to note. I think somebody did. Somebody also submitted a question on a wait list. So I'll kind of walk through here. Um, the wait list can be enabled or disabled. So if you do keep track of a wait list, this is the button here. And what it does is it just creates a line on the top of this calendar. Uh, if there is somebody on the wait list here, it'll put the number of people on the wait list for any given day. When I click on that, it'll actually show who that is, what their requested dates was. You can put notes in there. Uh, if there's a plus sign, it just means you can add someone to the wait list. You can choose a person, what their requests are, notes, etc. cetera. Um, so that is the wait list feature. This button here is a group selection mode. So we do have the uh, concept of making a group reservation. So if I wanted, if somebody says, hey, I want to I want to book three rooms or I want to book your whole property and have a wedding, uh, um, you can click on this. What that allows you to do is click and drag and then it allows you to continue to click and drag and it does not have to be the same nights. So you can add as many units here as you want and create a reservation, one reservation that includes multiple different rooms. The other thing this allows you to do is sometimes people are okay with with switching units. So maybe they really like Sportsman, it's only available two of their nights. You can click and drag for the first two nights and then they're willing to switch to Abby's Retreat for the other two nights. So you can come in and make one reservation where they're staying in two nights, they're swapping rooms and they're moving to a different room. And then you can continue making that reservation. Um, I am going to answer a question here um, okay a couple of couple of questions I'll try to address um, the other uh, thing that I want to show you on the calendar is we have drag and drop features so if mr. man here wants to move dates or rooms or and or rooms we can click on that reservation and we can drag them and drop them anywhere we want. At that point, they'll ask us um, if we want, you know, want to keep the current rate or update the rate. Uh, if you want to extend the reservation, you can point to the right hand side. The cursor turns into a two headed arrow. We can drag them out um, or we can drag them to the left. So that's kind of the um, the the way to move reservations or to edit on the fly. Now, somebody asked if how to cancel a reservation. So a couple of different ways. I'm on the calendar here, so maybe I'll just do that. Um, but I can click on any reservation here. If I click on this suitcase icon, I get a cancel reservation option. At that point, in the configuration, which we would help you with, we can set up cancellation policies. So whatever your cancellation fee might be, if it's within a certain time period, maybe it's a per certain percentage or a flat dollar rate, you can do that. Um, and then it would walk you through canceling this reservation, you know, and then it verifies, are you sure you want to cancel? Yes. It basically says, hey, um, with my fee and everything it's going to be 21 you've already paid this i owe you a refund so we can go in and process a refund uh, make payment um, and then send a letter if i want cancellation letter and then uh, that reservation goes away um, someone else asked how you would take credit card info without actually processing it so great question. So there is another way. So if you do not want to actually process cards from within our system, we do have what we call our four word solution. So we're in the cloud. We want to be as secure as possible with credit card information. So let me click on a reservation that has um, I've that was made online. So they had to give their credit card number. And if you do not want to actually sign up and do the full gateway and integrated processing and you want to process to it through a terminal uh, we show the type of card the last four digits and the expiration well 
if you want to process on a terminal, you need to know that full credit card information. So we do have an option to view this card. What that does is it brings up a new dialog window. We have to click on this view card at shift four. What's that, what that's doing is it's going out and generating four random security words that they've built. Now I click on this site, I type these four words in, hit submit, and then the full credit card number appears on the screen. So then you can actually process uh, against that. So there is that option as well. Um, so just to give you, to, just to give you that that option as well. Um, let me just cancel out some of these. Somebody asks, is there a blocked customer? Um, option. So um, this is the last question I'm going to answer here as far as this goes. I, again, I just want to make sure I get done in time and then I'll continue on. But so we don't really have like a, a blocked customer. However, we do have a, the ability to, when you make that reservation, we say book um, using tags. So for example, I've got one right here. Um, you can create a tag called bad guest or blocked or do not allow back, whatever it is. So you can quickly see right on this screen uh, if that's a customer you're not going to want to allow back. So uh, there is no way for us to ban any sort of email addresses. So for online reservations, there's no way to do that. Uh, but we do, when a person makes a reservation online, we do query the database to see if they're already in your database and we'll flag any any uh, potential duplicates. And at that point, you'll be able to see if if that's a, um, a guess that you maybe do not want back. Um, so that is the occupancy map in a nutshell. Um, again, I kind of went over some different settings. Uh, maybe I'll go over just a couple of more. Um, on my screen, I'm seeing roughly I don't know, two weeks or so. Um, there, there are some settings here that you can adjust how many days you see on the screen by um, changing the column width here. So the, the if I shrink this down, then there's going to be a lot more days on the screen. Or if I expand it out, there's not going to be as many. So you, everybody can individualize things and, and see whatever their monitor size is in and adjust that as necessary. Same thing with the number of units. So maybe you have a lot of units. Uh, and you want to be able to show them on one screen without scrolling, you could really shrink that uh, cell height down and be able to fit a lot of units. Um, or if you just have like 10 or 12 or whatever it is, you can expand those things to make it make it fill the, the space. We do have an option to show clean or dirty status of the rooms. So uh, like housekeeping statuses, we have that option as well. And then addition, one other thing here is you can shade the background colors of these units as well as create like color bars on the left and they can mean whatever you want them to mean um, you can create like maybe a, a unit type bar color here uh, maybe the shade of the back uh, background here is maybe what floor of your property it's located on again you can kind of just determine your own thing or you can just leave it on um, no colors and 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 go from there so whatever works for you guys there so um, so that being said, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna switch gears here because this is an appropriate time to talk about the online booking process. So this is I'm gonna move from what you guys see as the users into what your guest would see. So one thing uh, that differentiates us uh, over other companies, especially of Avivo, um, since most of you guys are from uh, are using Avivo at this point, uh, is we custom theme the booking engine to match your website. So we, our designers, once I submit a sale, our designers take a look at your website and they will theme this out. Um, it, will, it will look pretty much exactly like your website with the header um, that'll have your menu items here. These would be clickable to jump right into your website. So it, it presents kind of a one solution here versus jumping into a totally different look um, and then not how figuring out how to get back to your website. You can present 
the booking engine in two different ways actually. So a lot of our you know bed and breakfast inns properties presented this way where we can come in, click on an arrival date, click on a departure date, or people can select uh, items over here. They can select an arrival date, departure date, and fill in this information. And then they hit next, and then it shows what's available for that particular time period. Uh, you'll notice here as if you offer multiple rates, um, you can you can do those in tabs. So they could select an individual rate here if they want. Certain rates can have you know requirements that you can put in there. They can see the description, um, pictures, photo gallery there that they can walk through. The other way to do it, I'm going to jump back to this initial screen because because there are quite a few people that, that like this way as well. So the other way to present it is this, where it's more of a grid. So you've got your units down the side and then dates across the top, and you can choose to show rates on here or not. But then they can actually come in here, click, make a reservation, and it automatically puts that particular unit right in the cart. In fact, I'll do that here. Let's go, let's go make a reservation for Cottage One for those nights. Um, nope. Sorry. Now, um, let me back up. All right. So I click, clicked on the, the days that I wanted, unit that I wanted. Um, and now this part is optional. So for those of you that might not do packages or add-ons, um, you will automatically filter them right into the next screen. But for those of you that do packages, sell add-ons, um, you can do those things right here. You can put a photo gallery in for your packages. You can read what this package is all about. It shows the price. We can add those things to our reservation. So it's kind of a cool uh, feature that we built here. When you hit add, it floats over, highlights this part. So we want to be um, as transparent, and so should you, to your guest to know what they've got in their carts, how much it is. We also make it easy to remove certain items. So we don't wanna confuse the guests or make them not sure whether you clicked on something, how much it is. Uh, the more transparent you can be, the better chance they're gonna continue making this reservation. You also have the ability to sell actual items too. So maybe you wanna try to sell robes or, or um, whatever else you might wanna sell. And then we get to the final booking stage. So um there is the name field obviously address city state zip uh email phone those are all required fields they do have to put in a credit card number it does show them the deposit policy when you're going to charge them how much you're going to charge now if you do not offer if you do not choose the integrated processing obviously then you you know this doesn't charge the card, it, it gets sent to you and you can charge it. If you do the integrated processing, you can choose whether or not you want the booking engine to actually process this when they hit book. Um, again, they put in their credit card number, security um, expiration, security code, name on card. This is one for, for those Avivo users that are on this call, which I think is most of them. Um, from the uh, many demos that I've been doing here in the last couple of weeks is we actually collect the address on the card that gets sent along with that um, and postal code. This part of the booking process is optional. So you can ask them additional questions if you want. So some of those custom fields that maybe you've built, uh, you can choose to put those on as questions. And then if you do choose to put them on, you can actually make them optional so they wouldn't have to fill them in, um, or you can make them required. So you can make them bold and required. And then the final stage here is to put your terms and conditions in. So it's in a nice scroll box. They don't have to click something and, and go somewhere else. You know that it's visible right here. You get to put whatever you want in here. You can actually change the font size, put things bold. So if there's things you wanna be sure to highlight here, um, right on the, the very top, you can make this thing bold and have stars and asterisks and, and make sure that it pays attention to you. But they have to accept these terms and conditions before they book. And then once they book, you get um, they get a copy of a confirmation letter. You get to choose whatever letter you want sent to them. 
and it can be different than your normal confirmation letter if you want. You as the property owner get a copy of that confirmation letter as kind of a notification and then they'll be entered right into the system. So you would get a notification, they'd be on the calendar, they'd be on the dashboard here as a recent reservation. So um, that's kind of the process of the, the online reservation. Uh, I hope that I covered that in, in uh, good enough detail that that makes sense. Um, all right, so I'm gonna breeze through a couple of these sections here um, just because they're easier to cover and I don't have to go into too much detail. Um, the people section, this is your database. So you can type in here and it would search for an individual. Um, the other thing people do here is do an advanced search. So you can come in, let's say for example, you wanted to do a marketing email blast. You could come in and, and say, all right, show me everybody that's a, that's a repeat guest. Um, and they're from the uh, state of Colorado. Let's see if I um, did a search that returned any results here. Um, I hit search and I hope everybody can hear me. It looks like my internet maybe is on. Oh, I've got two people here. So whatever criteria here, you can put multiple criteria. They have to meet both or just put in one. It creates a list. I can then export that to a CSV file and then um, import that as a list to any type of email marketing program that I might use. Uh, reservation section. This is a listing of your reservations. So. Uh, for example, I go back to a canceled reservations. This might be a quick way to, if somebody calls in and says, hey, my name's um, uh, Bill Brown, I wanna cancel my reservation, you could come right over here and just start typing Brown, um, and it would pull up. Obviously in my demo, I've got a lot of them. Um, the other things you can do here is use quick actions. I can just show current and future reservations. I can show reservations um, just for today which kind of is like the dashboard area. I can show reservations this week, next week, all reservations. So you have some shortcuts there. Uh, invoices, I'm gonna really bro blow through this section. Every reservation has its own invoice. So usually you can check in, check out, you're dealing with those invoices. But in case somebody references like an invoice number, you can come in here, type it, get direct access to that invoice. Um, the gift certificate section. This is the section, and again, if maybe if you don't do gift certificates, this section won't even appear. But if you do sell them, you can enable this. Um, this section is designed to, you know, look up uh, a certificate you have on file, shows you the number, um, any type of expiration, how much is balance. This is a this plus sign here also allows you to add a certificate. So if you wanted to. Um, you know, add add a new certificate, who's purchasing it, if you know the recipient, et cetera. Report section, I'm gonna cover some of the, the basics in reporting um, after the fact. If you have any specifics on reporting, we can walk, obviously we can do one-on-one -on -one demos too, but um, uh, reports are kind of divided into certain sections. So reservation reports are, you know, for reservations. So maybe you wanna show everybody that's arriving this week. You could type in this, the dates you wanna see it for and it would list out who's arriving and then it would give you a breakdown on their charges, payments, and then notes and details as well. Um, here's the more key items reports. If you wanted to show it for a different time period other than that week on the dashboard. I'll show you the housekeeping report. By default, it shows today. Uh, this shows arrivals, departures, stayovers, if there's any units out of service. Uh, it shows who's coming, how many people. And then if I've filled, if I've created any tags or tagged them with anything, they'll show up. If I've filled out any of those uh, custom fields that I've created, it shows those here as well. And then on the bottom of this housekeeping report, it actually shows guest count totals. So it shows you the number of people coming, going, staying over and it gives you a morning count and an evening count as to who's gonna be at the property today. Uh, let's see, I won't go over like ledger, deposits. Um, we do have payments by type. So again, you choose the dates you wanna see it for. So this is like the current month. 
um, and it, it gives you a breakdown of cash, check, credit card, etc. cetera. Um, revenue reporting, I'll, I'll show this report. It probably has the most amount of information on it. People use it. Uh, again, I can type whatever dates that I want. This can be future dates or past dates. Future, we count revenue as on a accrual basis, so it accounts for when the person actually is coming to stay. Um, that's when we put in the revenue. So for example, this is current month. It breaks it down by unit, number of days it was available during that time period. If you marked it out of service for any days, number of nights it was booked. So we get occupancy percentages, ADR, rev power, revenue, taxes, et cetera, for each unit. And then on the bottom, we've got property totals here. So this is a property-wide total amount. Uh, and then the, the other big report that a lot of people use is taxes. Um, this tax report, again, choose the dates. In my demo, I've got a lot of taxes, but um, whatever taxes you have, it gives you the tax, the revenue that, that should have fallen under that category. If you exempted any revenue, um, and then it basically gives you a breakdown of the taxed revenue, what you should have collected, what you did collect for each tax and then total. You can get breakdowns here so we can click and expand these things. So then I can actually see um, what made up that that tax to by individual invoice and these things are clickable. So in case you need to drill down, you can do that as well. Uh, moving on to the configuration section. This is actually where most people will start um, their journey with Redstream, but our support people are really good during a transition to kind of basically help you get this all set up. So here's where you can add multiple users of the system. With Redstream, there is no limit to the number of users you can have. You can edit their permissions to restrict access as well deposit policies, cancellation policies. You set up your units with descriptions and you load in your images and your, your photo gallery here is super easy to do. Set up your revenue accounts, manage your taxes, whatever your taxes are, um, tax groups. So, so maybe your rooms are taxed with you know lodging tax and state tax, your gift shop items are just state tax. So again, you can set all of those different categories up so everything can be taxed um, with different tax rates if you need it to be. Um, POS items, where you put in POS items, you build packages. Here's where you set up your rates. Rates can have um, different seasons, multiple rates. Each rate can have its own season, separate season. So you have really a lot of flexibility there to do what you want with rates um, and, and again, on those rates, you can have different minimums, et cetera. Uh, yield management is a tool um, where you can come in and create rules. So you can set, uh, if the reservation is between this number and this number nights out, like say within the next month, you could put between zero and 30 nights out. And if my occupancy is between this percentage and this percentage, I can either raise or lower my rates. And then the system will constantly monitor these rules uh, if it hits a rule and you want it to adjust the rate, it'll automatically adjust those rates. Um, it'll adjust those rates for your software as well as your um, booking engine for your website. Uh, final couple of things here. This is where you create your tags for people, reservations, create your, your custom fields. I do want to go into these last couple of items. Um, this is the where you build all your letters and invoices, registration cards, etc. So when you click on these items, um, you basically get entered into a word processor. Now by default, we do put in some some default letters for people and an invoice and a registration card. I get a lot of questions on conversions of whether we can import that stuff. We cannot import that. However, um, you can do, you know, some people do click and drag. You can copy and then paste your your information in here. And then all you would need to do is change these items. These are called letter codes. So this is the areas where we'll insert the information from that um, reservation or time period. So, you know, if you wanted to put in, you know, dear and then first name last time, we could tape that in 
and then come in and, and put in, I want the insert, the first name, and then their last name. So that's kind of how you design your letter. You can do bold, italics, change the font, size, etc. cetera. Uh, and then the final thing on this configuration is scheduled emails. So you can set it up. Uh, you can build letters, that, for example, these are the common ones, pre-arrival and thank you. So you can build a pre-arrival letter that says, hey, looking forward to your stay next week. Um, you can set up the letter, what letter is sent, how many days before or after their arrival or departure. So in this example, it's pre-arrival goes out four days before their arrival date. And everybody reads their email first thing in the morning, so I'm going to have it go out at 7 a.m. So I can save that, and then every reservation four days before their arrival, they're going to get this letter that you know says you're looking forward to their stay. Same thing with thank you letter. You can set it up to go day after they leave. Hey, we enjoyed having you. Um, you know, we'd appreciate you booking again, or write us a review. Click here to go to my TripAdvisor page, or or click here. Uh, to go to my booking engine and you can set up a promo code if you want so click here and type in vip 2019 to receive a special rate um, you can do those types of things um, and then the final section here that i'm going to go over is the booking engine section so this is just some different settings that you can put put in here uh, a lot of people want to know how far in advance people can book online and the answer to that is however far you want them to so you can create, uh, if you want same day reservations, you can put zero here and this is out in the future. So in my in this scenario, it's a year into the future, but maybe you wanna go two years, whatever it is. We also have a setting here. If you do allow same day bookings, you can actually cut that off at a certain time of the, the evening. So say you'll allow same day bookings up until 6 p.m. And then at, after, if somebody searches past 6 p.m. and that's your local time um, they're they're not going to be able to make a reservation for that night it'll always be the next day um, and then you could just set some default number of rooms um, how maybe you'd only allow them to book one room at a time or multiple rooms um, so those are just some different settings they also manages manage all of the images here so you can quickly load up all of the images you might have in all of your rooms and then it's really easy to build photo galleries so i can choose the unit over here um, i can decide which unit which pictures i want to go to that unit i can then shuffle those things around to determine the order in which i want to present them so right there i just did that my website is now up to date with those images so it's that it's that quick and then again here you can put your policies and restrictions minimum stay policy etc so uh, final section here is integrations most of this is handled by our support team if you do work with otas we have um, we work with a channel manager called my allocator which works with uh, close to 100 different channels and then we also have a direct interface to booking.com so if it, some people are only on booking.com and if you're only on booking.com we can help you get this set up and then it just goes direct to booking.com and you do not need um, the channel manager. So that is um, the product demo. I went through the online reservations, um, the product demo. The last thing I wanted to cover um, going back is the, the um, conversion process. So, this is the other thing when we convert this is i'm going to use a vivo as the example i do know maybe one or two people are from other systems but um for a vivo we have a link here that i'll go to um as soon as i go through these couple of bullet points but um, it tells you what we import timing wise we can usually get people up and running about two to three weeks from when we complete the paperwork um and as far as that paperwork goes, a lot of people ask if we have a commitment, you can choose that. So we actually have month to month um, or annual. Annually, you get a little bit of a price break and it's an annual commitment or month to month um, is just simply month to month. You can cancel any time. Um, here is the information. Let me see if this works clicking on. Yep. Yeah. So 
we have a page in our in our knowledge base talking about the process and what gets converted. Um, I can share this information to you with anybody um, or uh, after the fact, if, if people want to, they can just leave a note or a question here in the webinar. But we import all of your contacts, um, your reservations with the arrival dates, departure dates, unit assignment, the people coming, um, the status, emails, booking notes, etc. cetera. Um, I do want to go through what people need to do after the conversion because there it's it's um it's not like you convert and then you need to do absolutely nothing um so after the conversion what happens is being that we can only convert the data that we're able to get out of their system we are not able to re, uh, recreate line item by line item details on the invoice so you will need to touch the reservation and go in and kind of recreate that invoice. Um, let me show you one example quick and then I will end this scenario. I set up an example of, of um, an Avivo conversion. So I've got Jack here, which I can view, if I go into Jack's reservation, this is what it'll kind of look like. So you'll see the reservation with what unit, the dates are staying it. Our invoice will say zero dollars. Um, we will put all of the information as far as, as rates and what was charged from Avivo, we'll put in the notes here. So you can see um, what room charges were, what the taxes were, what they've paid, um, and how they and, and what that payment was. And then what your job would be is to come in here and just say change the rate. And then you would choose your rate and it would automatically fill that in. You hit save, and then you could record that 355 payment in there um, and choose choose that. So for every reservation you um, that you want to do that with, that's how you would go about kind of recreating those invoices. So uh, with that being said, good timing here. I am just at an hour. Uh, is there any other questions that people have? Um, I didn't have anybody write any more questions in. Um, if you want to ask a specific question and go over it, uh, there is an option to raise your hand here and I will unmute you since there's not a, a ton of people on here, we can do that too. For those of you that need to leave, that's that's fine. Um, we will follow up with everybody. I understand if you need to leave, it's one o'clock. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to type those in right now or raise your hand. Uh, and I'll give it about a minute here before we uh, say goodbye. So let me know if you have any questions. You're welcome, Judy. Appreciate your time uh, attending. I uh, appreciate everybody's time. I know uh, it's a busy, busy time. A lot of people are gearing up for their busy season. So taking an hour out is uh, much appreciated. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, I tried to email everybody personally yesterday evening. Um, so you have my email address and direct line for my phone number. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, we will follow up. I'll follow up with everybody individually as well. So I appreciate everybody's time again. Thank you. Go enjoy the rest of your days. Hopefully uh, it's not too, well, hopefully it is busy for you, uh, but not too crazy. So again, thank you everyone.